Hello, it's Tom from Texas and welcome to another floppy deep dive. Today's video we are going to attempt to repair a Commodore 64 all on my own. This is my very first time trying to fix a Commodore 64. This is one of the ones machine that I purchased on one of my weekend hunts and it did not work. And so let's do a quick flashback and I'll show you what it was doing when I first tried to use this machine. First, turn on my monitor, which I know works. Turn on this floppy. Came on, green light, that's a good sign. And let's try this baby. Red light. And black screen. Dun, dun, dun. As you can see, we got no screen. I'm going to turn it on. I got a black screen. Uh, guys, I got red light, but I just got black on the screen. So this just turned into project. Because I do not believe this Commodore 64 works. Shut it off. So now that you saw what it was doing, I am going to now show you how I am attempting to try to repair this. And we'll go through each step. This is part one of me trying to fix my very first Commodore 64. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. Better. Stronger. So as I showed on one of my uh, weekend hunts, I came across a Commodore 64 that I purchased. And when I went to try it, it did not work. So I've been trying some different things to see if it works and I got another one. But what I've tried so far is what I've learned from watching other people. And this is new to me. This is my first Commodore to work on it, but I got some Deoxit D5. And I was told, or a good rule of thumb was to remove the socketed uh, chips and put a little bit of the deoxid D5 in there and then replace it and make sure these chips are down good. And I did that for everything on this board um, and no luck. I was still getting the black screen of death for the Commodore where you just turn it on and you just get nothing. So my next attempt that I'm going to try is I heard that it's the PLA chip and the PLA chip uh, often goes out and causes the black screen and actually is very common. So I was watching Adrian's Digital Basement uh, and he was talking about these different PLAs and so sure enough I did a little Google search and I came across one that I'm going to try today just to see uh, if I have any luck. Here it is. I got this also from the same place where I get my cables to hook up my VGA monitors from the 8-bit classics um, and I am going to give this a shot today and I figured while I'm doing it, I might as well make a video and show you guys what I'm in the middle of trying to bring this Commodore 64 back to life. I don't know if this will work. Um, I am still just learning a lot of this stuff as I go and, and, and having a blast while I do it. I, I am not an expert by any means of working on electronics or anything like that. I'm just your average Joe user trying to fix something and trying to make it work again because you know, I love Commodore 64 stuff. And so I'm kind of out of my comfort zone a little bit when I start messing with electronics and stuff, but I'm okay. I like to be able to be push myself a little bit out of my comfort zone. So a lot of this stuff to you experts or people who've been messing with electronics and fixing these keyboards for a long time, it's just gonna probably seem silly and simple to you. But to me, this was, you know, I did not mess with 
my Commodore 64, opened it up. Uh, I liked the fact I turned it on, it worked. I was into BBSs, I was into games. I did not have to work on these. I never owned a soldering iron. Um, I have never, you know, even took a chip out before. And so I've done a lot of research and I continue to research and I'm just taking you guys along with the journey. I did get this chip puller and this is the first time that I, uh, when I started working on this board that I pulled chips. Now I have, because I told you, I did pull these to deoxid and this tool actually works real well. It looks like it's metal, but it's actually plastic. I just got it off of Amazon, but it works really well pulling chips off and made it pretty easy. I learned that the U17 slot is where the PLA goes. So this is where the chip that I'm going to be replacing or attempt to replace. I did get dead cartridges to, to try to make some kind of sense out of stuff uh, by watching those, but I still just got a black screen. I didn't get anything when I tried those dead cartridges and, and plug, plugged them in. So I'm hoping in by changing this PLA out, I at least get something to kind of lead me in a direction of what's wrong with this thing. And I'm just gonna keep trying or anything. This will just turn into parts for another one if that's the case. But I wanted to at least try to bring this back to life the best I can. And you know, I'm not gonna give up until I, I give it a good fair shake. So this is my next attempt is going ahead and I'm gonna pull this chip out of here. And just, like I said, take you guys along with me. See how easy that was to pull out? I didn't bend anything. It, it just came out real easy. So, to me, easy is good. <laughs> I, I don't always, you know, before I didn't know how to pull a chip out. And uh, when I tried to pull one out before, uh, you know, I just destroyed these. I bent them all up. I did not do a very good job. But now that I know these polars by watching everybody's videos and learning what I can do, I just, you know, pull it out with no snap. Used to be a little hesitant about it, fear of making something wrong. But I figured, heck, this thing's already broke. What else could I do, right? So anyway, so we pull out the PLA. And now... I'm gonna put in this new PLA that I got. And it's supposed to be compatible from what I read with all the different boards, um, incompatible with uh, the Epix fast load cartridge and everything. So I'm counting on that to be the case. I do know enough to put it up. I see the little notch. So I'm gonna do the notch here up just like they did. And I'm gonna insert this in here. best I can without bending the pins and filming it at the same time for you guys. Hopefully I don't sh shake this camera too much, but I'm going to get more down in here so I could see exactly what I'm doing because I wanted to get a nice clean insert. This actually isn't lining up the best that I can. It looks like these are kind of like bent in a little bit, if that would that makes sense. I just feel like I need magnifying glass for my, to watch what I'm doing here. But it doesn't look like it stretches all the way across, like these are bent in. Maybe in the shipping, or maybe that's just how it comes. But it is definitely not lining up very good for me to replace one side. Not as easy as I had hoped anyway. Just pop this ch chip in. All right guys, so I finally got it in and I literally had to put a lot of force to pop that in. I mean, to the fact that I was holding my hand here and push it with all my body weight just to make that and it finally popped in. I don't know <laughs> if that's normal because I've never done this before or what, but uh, that was tough. That was tough to get in there. And now it's in there for sure. I don't know how easy it would get to come back out, but it's in there for sure. So 
let's get this thing hooked up some power and see if it actually if it does anything. Let's first hook it up to this monitor here. And then let's hook it up to some power. And we're just going to turn this on and see what it's going to do, if anything. I'm going to show you the screen. Sorry about the camera work. I'll show you the screen the best I can here, I'm kind of at a weird angle. So when I turn it on, does it do anything? Hey, look at that. How about that? I have got a blue screen, a flashing red light. I think I might have fixed my first Commodore 64 by replacing the PLA chip. Not positive, because it looks like that red light, or the flashing red under there has just stopped flashing or something's going on there. You see how it's going real slow? But at least I got a screen, which before I had nothing but a black light. So all I did was change the PLA. I uh, got the PLA in there, and now we're going to do some testing on this Commodore and see, you know, what else we can do to get this, if this thing's working or not. But at least I could do a test cartridge and stuff in here now. So we'll get that started and go from there. How cool is that? Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully we'll get this Commodore 64 back up and running back to perfection again. And thanks for joining me on another floppy deep dive.